right, so for our final fly in the Caddis series here that we're going to tie, uh, this is going to be a CDC and Elk uh, dry fly. Um, the original pattern tied by Hans Wieleman was uh, a very, very popular uh, fly, and, and still is, obviously. Um, but I have kind of put my own little twist on it, um, just seeing the way a lot of other people have tied the fly over the years. Um, it's a great dry fly, it's incredibly buoyant, it lands very, very soft, uh, and it's led to you know, a lot of really, really good um, dry fly fishing for me over the years. Um, so, uh, to start, we're gonna have a size 16 TMC uh, 100 BL in here. Uh, again, you could use a 100 SPBL, uh, like we used before, um, a 100, a 101, really any manufacturer's dry fly hook. Um, I'll tie these anywhere as large as a 12 and always as small as a 20 on average, um, but 16 is kind of a good all-around size. Uh, for thread, we're gonna be using UTC 70 uh, in tan. Uh, you have to use UTC to do it this exact way uh, that I'm going to show you today on the video. Um, you have to use a multi-filamented multi style thread. Um, so we'll get started here. Uh, we're just going to start our thread really anywhere on the hook shank uh, and work the thread rearwards before we cut off our tag. Next we're going to go to some CDC. So in this case I have two nice full feathers here for the size 16. Uh, this is Caddis Dunn Trout Hunter CDC. I really, really like Trout Hunter CDC. That's a great value. You get a, a good number of, of high quality feathers uh, in either their smaller standard bags or also their larger bulk packs. Um, it's great quality stuff uh, and again comes in a variety of different options for color. Um, so for anyone that has a Petagene, a Mark Petagene magic tool, uh, this is a great opportunity and a great way to use it. Um, however, if you don't have a magic tool, um, they are no longer available in the United States, um, as far as I'm aware at least. Um, so I'm going to be using just a clip off of a magic tool, not the actual whole system uh, that Petagene originally used. Uh, a great substitute for this would be like the new uh, Stanfo clips, uh, or also say like the Swiss CDC multi-clamp. Uh, or you can even just kind of figure out something and make something at home for, for yourself as well. Um, so I've lined up the stems and the tips of these two fibers and I've stroked all of the, excuse me, the two feathers and I've stroked all these fibers out to either side. I'm simply gonna clamp down on one side of it and we're gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna just trim down the stem. So I, I'm left with essentially two feathers that are cut in half so I still have the stem and the other half of the fibers. Uh, set those aside, you'll be able to use them again. Now I have my clip full of nothing but pure open CDC. So we'll set the clip aside for a moment. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is, I'm gonna spin my thread counterclockwise. That's gonna open it up. Uh, like I said, UTC is a multi-filamented thread and that's important for how I like to do this. I'm just gonna take another barbless hook here. Um, Stonflow, Stonflow makes a really uh, nice little tying tool. It's a thread splitter. Uh, but a lot of times it's just a, a good sharp bobbin, or excuse me, bobkin, or the thread of your hook works great. And I'm going to actually split this thread. So I don't know if you can see that clearly in the video here, but um, I now have the thread split. This is essentially just creating a dubbing loop without the excess bulk of multiple thread wraps back and forth and, and a, an actual dubbing loop. Uh, now I'm going to put the clip into that cut thread, and or excuse me, the split thread, and now I'm left with essentially a hackle made out of CDC. I can adjust my fibers for their position if I want them closer into the middle, which is kind of where I like them. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna spin my bobbin. And you'll see this is gonna create a, a pretty sweet little uh, dubbing rope here out of hackle. So the traditional CDC and elk uh, was tied obviously by the, the, the tip of the CDC, was, was tied in the rear, wrapped forwards, and you had a couple loose uh, kind of stringy fibers coming off, off, off the top there. Uh, the issue that I've had with that is that a lot of CDC feathers that you get, the stems are very, very thick, and they have a tendency to break as you're wrapping them, so you lose a lot of durability to the fly. And you're also wasting a lot of space as far as, uh, you know, you don't have the inherent buoyancy of all the CDC. So i just taken up that extra slack there, uh, just with a few thread wraps back and forth, and now I'm gonna just start simply tying uh, forward, and I'm gonna take a moment after each thread wrap to stroke those fibers back. Again, you can do this uh, with a regular dubbing loop if you uh, prefer, but for me the split thread method just works really, really well. And you'll see now I've packed a ton of CDC uh, you know, into this tiny little fly. Uh, so it's, it's a really, really 
simple way to get a lot of flotation and buoyancy. Now I've left a little clear spot at the head there. Now we're going to reach for our deer hair again. We're going to select a nice healthy little wing here. I'm going to trim that off the hide. Grab it by the tips. I'll take my comb and brush out any of that under fur. Then we're going to go to our hair stacker again. Those into the stacker tips first. Stack them. Remove them. And then we're going to measure just like we did on the X caddis. I want this wing to be those tips just past the bend of the hook, just a little tiny bit. So that's about the right length for me there. I'm going to transfer hands. I'm going to cut that nice and flush. I'm then going to spin my bobbin, put some torque into it, set my wing. One, two, three thread wraps through that head. Now you've added a ton more buoyancy and flotation in that little head as well. You have a nice clean deer hair wing. I'm going to pull that back, reach for our whip finisher, and do a couple turns right behind the eye of the hook. Cinch that down, trim that off, and there we have it. A completed CDC and elk with a, like I said, a little bit of a twist. If you have any of these extra long fibers that you're concerned with, uh, I, I almost never do anything to these. I leave them pretty buggy and just let them fish. Um, you can certainly break them. You can trim them as well, but uh, I far prefer breaking them with my fingers so you don't have that kind of clean, flush, cut look. Uh, and there it is.